Thank you for watching, and remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support the way over to the eastern seaboard and you've got a double barrel high actually so that keeps much of the southern tier very warm even the northeast will be warming up later in the week as well you've got cincinnati where the average high is 79 reynolds but we're going into the 90s tomorrow into the, the next week so it's september i think a lot of people are ready for the cooler weather but you know oh, yeah. not necessarily always the case i think we're gonna get a few more pool days in mm -hmm. i think they have around the great lakes we see some storms already rumbling along the north coast there on lake superior but otherwise everybody's looking good for now it's really not going to be much until much later today anywhere from minnesota into the door peninsula into northern michigan this is the area to watch for the potential of some damaging wind and possibly some hail to go along with that heavy rain but as you can see traveling the top end of i-75 looks good for most of the day today some of that rain tending to sag a little bit southward here over lake huron as we head towards dinner time but notice green bay we really don't see anything bothering you yet until later tonight and i mean much later overnight into early tomorrow morning there's your green from green bay all the way over towards detroit and into the niagara frontier of western new york state so some showers and thunderstorms do head into parts of the northeast as well the other area to watch is going to be right here over eastern Colorado, some of the suburbs well east of Denver, of course, the airport east of Denver. So there could be some nasty storms developing there, southeastern Wyoming, as well as the western parts of Nebraska. And just like the Great Lakes region, these storms may wait a little while, too, before they really get going. I think we're okay for the morning time period. First half of the day really looks fine all the way through lunchtime. It's not going to be until about dinner time when we start to see these storms emerge here on the plains of eastern Colorado and working into Nebraska and South Dakota. Reynolds? We're a little worried, a little concerned about what could develop here in the southern Gulf of Mexico. This is an invest area, meaning it's under investigation for development by the National Hurricane Center. So this is designated Invest 94L, has an 80% chance of developing. Not where it is right now, it's a little too close to land, kind of overland actually, here in Mexico. But eventually it does move up into those very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico, right along the coast of Mexico, and eventually up toward the coast of Texas. So if this were to get a name, if it were to become a tropical storm. The next name on the list is Nicholas. So we do have some steering currents that will steer Nicholas in that direction of Texas, perhaps Louisiana as well. For now, it's over the middle of the country, but that clockwise flow around that high as it shifts to the east will help to bring in whatever this is, whether it's a depression or a storm, eventually up toward the western Gulf of Mexico, affecting the upper coast here as well as Texas with some very heavy rainfall. You've got all that tropical moisture, whether it becomes a tropical system or not. So as we take a look at the model comparison, the American model does see an area of spin developing right about there, just off the coast of Texas, and then kind of paralleling the coast, and maybe not even moving in until it gets much farther along up towards, say, the Galveston Bay area, Houston, Lake Charles, that area. However, the European model has a different way of looking at it here. We do see an area of spin, a little low pressure system developing, but then quickly moving in. Doesn't really spend a lot of time over water, and it impacts southern Texas in the upper coast of Mexico sooner rather than later, but then eventually the remnants of that, they'll hit you in Houston too. So regardless of which model you look at, you've got some rainy times ahead for places like Houston and Lake Charles. In fact, the European model says, you know, light to moderate over here, the heaviest rain coming in across South Texas. So Corpus Christi, as well as Brownsville, we could see several inches of rainfall with this. However, the American model, this is the one that takes it up the coast of Texas into Louisiana. This is where you focus that heavier precip, certainly over southwestern Louisiana. And yes, even New Orleans, we see some rain in your future as well. We definitely don't need it. We've got surpluses of almost two feet. All right, so we've got Hurricane Larry. Now, Still things are nice and quiet. around the Great Lakes or that walk along Navy Pier looking great as well. But there are some Way storms. up there along the north shores of Lake Superior. And we also have a disturbance that's coming through from the west. So that's going to trigger some storms that could have some high wind, damaging wind, could take down some trees and power lines anywhere from Michigan back towards La Crosse into southeastern Minnesota. Uh, but there's also that potential we could see some hail to accompany some of that heavy rain. So Green Bay, Chicago, the next few hours looking A-OK. -okay. Uh, we do see the rain starting to move southward though right along the top end of I-75 here in Michigan and that will also affect parts of western New York eventually but notice how now we're overnight and there was hardly anything going on over here in Green Bay so these storms may actually wait until late tonight into early tomorrow morning but when they do happen 
So here's the other area of concern today when it comes to severe weather. It's going to be eastern parts of Colorado, western Nebraska as well. And you can see uh, all the way back into southeastern Wyoming. We've got you in that red zone.